everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. When we parted ways yesterday, we had just finished painting these abstract alcohol ink flowers with an airbrush and a paintbrush. And then we had a quick lesson on how to draw a simple hummingbird. Let's put that all together now and paint our hummingbird into our flower painting. Now that we know how to sketch one out. <laughs> For this painting, I've pulled out a few Kilty ink colors. I've pulled out gray, green, light clover, blue, purple blue, purple, violet, and yellow. Um, and I will definitely be using the layering solution, which is becoming my new best friend for alcohol ink. I'll probably use it out of the, my little bottle because that's more convenient for me. And I'll need a couple little paint brushes, some micro brushes, 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol. When using the layering solution, you have to use 99%. And the reason for that is that 91% or anything under that is even worse, has water. And water breaks down the layering solution. The layering solution is not solvent soluble but it is water soluble, so water will wash it away. So if you have 91% and you try to paint over layering solution with that, you'll take away the layering solution, which would not be what you wanna do. So 99% is just fine. I've pulled out a water brush that's filled with isopropyl alcohol. I'll probably use a fine point Sharpie I have a pencil to help me sketch out sort of where I want things, and a little palette to keep my inks in. As I showed you in the last video, I put down my base wavy line to sort of define our hummingbird's position and size. So I'm doing the beak here and the belly right here, and the head kind of here. And I drew myself sort of an imaginary line through the head to position the eye. I'm gonna give it a really big eye, just to sort of really up the cuteness factor. <laughs> and next I marked out where I want my wings to start out, so I made that little line here for the wing closest to us, and I should have the back kind of continue here, and then the wing out in the back here, and I kind of made my sort of end points for where I want my wings to sort of terminate. So I think this one will end out here, and this one I will have kind of end over here. I'm still on the fence about the tail feathers, so I really didn't do anything about that yet. But I made myself a little end line here for how big I want the wing to be. Now, as for color, I think I'm going to go with a bright green and purple bird with a little touch of blue and maybe a little bit of gold. I'm not sure if this is a Mexican violet ear, but I'm going to play with colors sort of like along the lines of this guy. Now, since my bird's going to be green and purple and blue, I don't really need to do this step. But in case your bird's going to be like the ruby-throated that would have a white belly um, and a lot of white, you might want to do this. So I'm just going to show you what I would do if I needed to sort of take out the color. So this is just a water brush with alcohol in it. And I want to make sure that it's not too wet. So sometimes when you first uncap it, it can be pretty wet, so I just kind of rub off any excess alcohol. And I would just come in and sort of wipe away color. And I'm just discharging the color onto 
this scrap piece of paper. And the advantage of one of these is they don't get particularly wet. They stay damp more than anything, so you can be really controlled about where you draw your lines so that blooming doesn't kind of get away from you. If I tried doing this with a paintbrush, it would be a little more challenging because I would have to be super careful about wiping the brush and checking the brush and making sure that there wasn't too much on it, too much alcohol on it, because if I put it down, it could really just bloom right into my sky. So I'm just coming up the beak. Doing this also helps me sort of see where things will go. So even though I probably don't need to color-wise, it is helpful to kind of see where everything's going to be. And I think I'm going to take the wings out here, up to there, and then the tail down to here. I'm still on the fence about whether or not I want to flare out the tail feathers. I think I probably do. Very often when I draw an animal in colored pencil, I draw the eye first. I think it sort of lets me connect to the animal right away, and I enjoy the process of drawing it more as a result. So I'm going to do that here too. Given the detail necessary here, the ultrafine Sharpie is my best bet. I draw an imperfect, ovally, circle-y shape inside a larger ovaly circle shape <laughs> in order to give the eye a light ring around it. You see that a lot in birds. I try not to let the ring be complete. I don't leave it completely white all the way around. I kind of fill it in a little bit. And then I add the very important highlight to the eye. That highlight is really, really critical. Otherwise, the eye just looks kind of creepy. <laughs> okay, once that's done, I immediately protect the eye with a layering solution because it would be too, too easy to mess up that outer ring. Anything that bloomed would just wipe out that ring and I would just be bummed out. So I'm just protecting it now. When the solution dries, if you were doing this on glass or tile or a shiny surface, you'd never see the layering solution. You kinda can see a faint hint of it on things like Yupo, opaque white uh, plastic, this photo paper, I'll show it to you when it dries. But once you seal it with any spray sealer, you'd never know it had ever been there. My next step is the beak, and for that, I use a super fine paintbrush and gray ink. I use the wet ink as the top of the beak since it will be lighter there. And then as the ink dries in my palette, I use the now concentrated ink for the much darker bottom part of the beak. I then mix up a little blue and purple and give the bird a pretty throat and chest color. I'm really testing colors right now because I really haven't decided what I like or want for this. I have an idea, but I just want to see colors down on the surface and also near the flowers to make a decision. And here I show you how the solution has dried on the eye. If I catch it just right, you can kind of see that halo, I think. And that's also because I took the layering solution way outside the eye. I try out purple by the eye and decide I like that color more for today's bird. So I'm definitely going to stick with this purple. To be safe, I add a border of layering solution around the periphery of the bird to prevent any accidental blooming. 
if I start to paint the body of the bird, I don't want it to bloom into the sky. So I'm making sort of like a border of layering solution that'll protect me from that. So if it did bloom a little, kind of like outside the line, so to speak, it would be really easy for me to wipe it up. Next color, green. I try mixing yellow and light clover for a more lime-like color, and I like that a lot. I give the body a few different greens, and I do the same for the head. I am really starting to love this little guy already. <laughs> he is looking cute to me already. <laughs> Now, because hummingbirds have really clearly delineated feathers, as you can see in these pictures, I take out another tiny brush and I repeatedly dab the chin and throat area to give the suggestion of those feathers. I then pick up a little of the lime green and do the same to the crown area where the sun would be hitting the head of the bird. I am really liking how this is working out. I like this texture a lot. At this point, I wanted to play with the wings. I started to put some green down for the secondary feathers, and then I quickly realized I needed to put in the primary feathers first since the secondaries will be overlapping them. So with a number five round brush, I pick up some gray with a hint of purple and I paint in the larger primaries. I'm taking advantage of alcohol ink's propensity to make borders, so each stroke can be an individual feather and it'll just make the beautiful borders for me. That is such a bonus. Now, if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe and click on the bell so that you know as soon as I post a video so that you don't miss any tips, tricks, or techniques. After the bigger feathers are down, with a somewhat tiny brush, I paint in the much smaller feathers. For these, I chose a couple of different greens and one that leans toward a golden color. This was a mix of, I think it was light clover and yellow. Having finally <laughs> decided to flare out the tail feathers just a tad, I choose a violet and purple mix because I think that could be pretty. Then it was time to return to the feathers of the main body. I switch over to a micro brush again and I just pounce in that overlapping looking texture. Which I realize could also work pretty well for fish or snakes or alligators or something like that. I think that texture could work for other things as well. I like how the purple turned out. It's not perfect, but remember, it doesn't need to be, but I really like it. I then move on to the green below the purple patch, and I start dabbing at the belly to get it done as well. Well, I wasn't liking how that was going, <laughs> so I wiped out the entire chest and rump area and I started to get a little creative with the tail <laughs> I'm borrowing the colors from another hummingbird species and adding some orange and yellow gear just for fun I think it'll be a cute little pop of color after using the micro brush for a bit I switch over to the real paintbrush to try something else. I'm using the same number five round brush as I'd used for the wings. The advantage to the paintbrush is it doesn't need to be reloaded with ink as often, and it lets me vary the shape and size of my little dabs. And given that I'm not 
painting what's supposed to be a flat surface. I mean, my canvas or a piece of photo paper is flat, but the bird is not flat. It's kind of roundish. So being able to vary the size and angle of these little dabs kind of helps me give it more of a 3D look. And I was having a hard time achieving that with the micro brush. I start out making light green dabs and then I add darker ones. I go back and forth creating a texture that I'm really liking. After adding a darker patch at the base of the chest to help round out the look of the body, I transition to a more Kelly green to blend into the green on the neck and the back. Once that's done, I clean the brush and I pick up some purple ink. And I repeat the process for this patch. I don't know if there's a hummingbird with this color combination exactly, but I, you, know, you know, guys know, I like creating new species. <laughs> so I'm going with this for today. My mom loves purple and green together, so I kind of chose these colors for her. And maybe there is a bird out there that looks just like this. But if not, there is now. <laughs> With all the feathers done, I think it's time to give this little bird the ability to land. <laughs> so I add a few little gray lines just to suggest feet. I'm not gonna like really sit and try to make the feet all perfect. Just a couple little crooked lines and feet. <laughs> That's what these are, okay. And now I think that we can call this done. What do you think? Let's take a close-up view of everything. I think our little guy or gal turned out pretty good. I definitely want to try it in other colors now. What colors would you choose? Let me know in the comments and give this a thumbs up if you like how it turned out. I am having so much fun trying new things with you guys. And I encourage you, really so strongly encourage you, to try painting things you've never attempted before. Will you make something that's not perfect the first time around? Yeah, maybe. And will you make some boo-boos? Yeah, maybe. But every one of those boo-boos will teach you something new. And some may lead to awesome discoveries. But not trying will not lead to anything. So remember, no one has to see your work unless you want them to. So have at it. Play, create, let your creative natures shine. Thank you for hanging out with me. See you in a couple of days. Bye now.